Hey guys, it's Charlie subbing in for the Topher to bring you this first drive of the BMW XM. This thing is an entirely new car. Yes, it shares a little bit of similarity with the larger BMW X5 and X7s, but packing the 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 and a plug-in hybrid powertrain, about 27 kilowatt hour battery, that makes this an entirely unique driving experience. This thing starts at about $160,000, packs just that one powertrain, making 644 horsepower and about 590 pound-feet of torque. The entire goal of this car is not necessarily to be a driver's car at the end of the day, but to be a status symbol. BMW is going after some of those large luxury performance SUVs, things like the Mercedes G-Wagon, things like Land Rover SVRs, those sort of cars with this vehicle. It's just about uh, looking the part as it is about driving the part. Some key elements to point out are these big kidney grills. BMW has them light up. Let me see in a second if I can get those to light up here and show up well in the lighting. But you can also get this sort of surround area that's in black here and get that with a lot of different color options. They have sort of a bronze that really pops off with some of the certain colors. We are rocking 22 inch wheels, but 23s actually come standard. You can get the smaller wheels as an option if you want a little bit better aerodynamics and uh, maybe performance as well. I gotta read the press release again. All I know is these are wrapped in 275 40R22s in the front and huge 315s in the rear, uh, 315 35 R22s in the rear. Pretty darn impressive. Those are Pirelli P0 summer tires on this thing as well. And as you'll see from some of our other footage from driving earlier today, and probably some coming up here more, you can really hustle this thing. And with the plug-in hybrid powertrain behind an eight-speed multi-clutch transmission, this thing fills in a lot of torque and really gets up and goes. A lot of really cool styling elements you can see coming in even on the door handles. A lot of this sort of triangular design going on in here. They really tried hard to make this thing stand out, and I think they did a pretty great job. Tail lights kind of smoked out here, pretty unique as well. There's a little bit of the preview of that bronze that you can get in the car. Pop open the trunk. Quad exhaust tips. It's kind of cool in the way they did that stacked design. This is not my bag. This is BMW's bag. Right here, this is where they actually put the charge cable. It looks a lot like my wife's weekender bag, but that's kind of what they're going for here. They want it to be stylish. This has some grips on the bottom to keep it from sliding around. It's also tethered in there. A little bit of a cargo cover to protect your things and keep it from being quite so echoey. And into the back seat. A really cool leather combination here. Uh, a real nice feeling, very genuine brown leather. And this lighting isn't super fantastic, so <laughs> between the tinted windows and the lack of a real sunroof, maybe I'll have to do a little bit more interior shot in the, in the shade later on today. But at least to show you real quick, beginning of the video, some nice XM pillows. A lot of perforation in the seats, a lot of design going on as well. Very cool speaker grills for the optional 20 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system. That sounds really quite good. If you do want to see a dedicated review on that, I'll have one over on DM Sound. A lot of design familiarity that we're seeing here to some of the larger BMW cars, but also some unique elements as well. And the same can be said for the driving experience. Yes, it does feel like a BMW, but it doesn't quite feel like something like an X7 M60i does have a unique experience to it. Taking a look underneath, you see that 4.4 liter V8 motor, very familiar there. But then buried way on in there is our electric hybrid powertrain as well. Level two charging only, just up above seven kilowatts. So pretty much plug it in at night, get yourself about 30 miles of EV only driving. Nice combination there of efficiency and power. There we go. Even in the daylight, you can see some of the LEDs coming out there and maybe I can get some darker B-roll later on today.
big speaker arrangement up front. It looks like there's a lot more than there really is. There's only a mid-range and a tweeter, but it does take up a lot of the front dash area. I do really, really like the look of this leather though. And then you have a lot of brown Alcantara up above. No big surprises in terms of ergonomics and places to put things. Very familiar layout here. Your 14 inch iDrive 8 system up front, 12 inch digital gauge cluster right in front of us and a pretty darn useful head up display. A few different drive modes and hybrid button right here is going to allow us to customize how we're using our electricity. You've got hybrid is gonna operate like a normal hybrid electric vehicle, use the engine and the battery in tandem. Electric is going to keep us in electric only mode. We're gonna do that here to start. And then E-Control will charge the battery when it's regenning and then just hold the charge level when you're driving around. It doesn't charge it up quickly like we've seen in a few other plug-in hybrids. While we are in this little bit of an off-road section, I should point out we do have a few different four-wheel drive modes as well. This comes with BMW's X-Drive standard, but should you want to shake things up a little bit and change where power is being sent, front and rear, you go into setup, and then down here into the M X drive you've got four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive sport, and four-wheel drive sand. As I understand it, four-wheel drive sport will give us a little bit more of a rear bias, and four-wheel drive sand, if I'm not mistaken, is gonna send 50-50 to try to balance everything out. We do have an active differential in the rear that is able to send power all the way from one side to the other and keep your wheels pretty well sorted out in the rear. Right off the bat, you may be picking up on the boominess of this cabin. That's the only complaint I have from a NVH kind of noise vibration and harshness standpoint. It's just that there's a boomy aspect to this, and I don't know if it's the wheels being so large, if it's the cavernous nature of this cabin, but this thing is remarkably quiet at speed, which you'll see a little bit later on in the video on our highway portions, but you do hear the, the boom crashes over more of the bumps. No one pedal driving in this car. You do have two different levels of regeneration. You can go a min and a max. Max is what we're on right now and it's still not slowing us down too dramatically. We have blended braking as I get on the brake pedal. It's providing more regeneration into the battery as well as starting to blend in the actual friction brakes. I really appreciate how easy it is to use iDrive 8. It does have a learning curve, but if you play around with it in your driveway for about half an hour, or even better, get an instructional series by someone who knows what they're doing, then it is a pretty nice system to use. And I appreciate that I can either reach up and touch the screen, or I can keep my hand down and my eyes up and use this right uh, rotary knob here. This is a really cool element of some of these new BMWs with iDrive 8. Maybe it's just the XM right now, but look at this augmented reality that we have. The camera comes up in the center cluster and actually shows me where I need to be turning. So as we come up to the stop sign, you can see chevrons pointing to the right, almost as if I were playing Need for Speed or something like that on the PlayStation. And it says, all right, this is where you're gonna be turning right. And if that's a bit too overwhelming for you on the right and in the head up display, you still have more of a conventional map look that's mapping out where you need to go. I like the ability to drive this around in something like this small, serene town experience and just be on electrons only. It's very quiet, very peaceful, and because the electric motor is behind the transmission and working together with the transmission, it does provide a lot of power. After some torque multipliers, it's up over 300 pound-feet of torque from the electric motor. I think right at the electric motor it provides something like uh, 200s or so. A lot of facts and figures swirling around in my mind, but what you need to know is it's plenty capable of driving this thing around under its own power. I don't know why the engine just kicked on there. Maybe I hadn't selected E-Control earlier. There we go. Engine's back off. We're running on electrons only again, and it can get the car up to 87 miles per hour on battery only. So you truly can drive this around and drive it as an EV. Between the sound insulation and the aerodynamics and the electric powertrain, it's so quiet in here. Up here on the highway, 
BMW XM is remarkably quiet and seems to be pretty nice to drive. Haven't been in the saddle for too long yet, but the seat has plenty of adjustability. It seems pretty comfortable as well. I love being able to do that. Thigh support works nicely. Three different drive modes coming into play at highway driving here. Right now I'm in hybrid and I can see that the engine is on running just under 2000 RPM at 70 miles per hour. Doesn't seem to be utilizing the electric motor at all, though if I go to pass, I lean on the throttle, does it kick in? Yep, you can see that little quick flash of blue there as it shifts gears. Now it's regening a bit back down to 70. We do have the BMW Active Driving Assist with the active lane change, so if I go to change lanes, give this biker some room, the vehicle actively places itself over there. Nice and easy. If you go down into electric mode, the XM will propel itself on electrons only up to 87 miles per hour, even coming up this hill, holding 70 miles per hour just fine. And if we go down to e-control, which is what I've been driving around in mostly today, please excuse my Swedish ways coming in there. Back up to highway speed now, e-control mode. It doesn't seem to actually be doing much active charging. It's not like an, e, uh, an EV charge mode that you might get in some other plug-in hybrids where the engine's going to run a little bit harder in order to charge up the battery. But any sort of deceleration I'm doing that's giving regeneration into the battery, it's allowing that to accumulate so that over time, driving in more of a city type situation, I would build up range. Adaptive cruise control coming into play, of course, slowing us down behind the Subaru yelling at me because I'm not touching the wheel. Yeah, I'm sure this would be a plenty great highway cruiser and I'll be able to attest to that a little bit more because we are, will be doing quite a few miles in the car today. I will say these 23 inch wheels do provide a good amount of road impact vibration into the cabin. You can hear some of these little bumps. I mean, you feel them and this does have kind of a split personality, and yes, it's an M product, it's supposed to be sporty, we have a ton of power, but also it's supposed to be this luxury mobile, and it's kind of like, well, which one do you want to be? Because if you really wanted to be floaty and luxurious, you'd have something like 20-inch wheels and a lot more sidewall. But obviously, you got to try to look cool and make a statement, so uh, 23s, <laughs> and then you're going to get a lot more of those little road bumps coming through into the cabin, both audibly and fe I'm feeling them as well. It's a vibration out here on some beautiful high elevation roads with the XM playing around with its various drive modes. Let's demonstrate a little launch. Maybe try to get up to some a little bit cleaner asphalt here. We'll probably have a better chance to do a launch later, but just in case. The way this car blends the hybrid system for extra power really is fun. Steering launch here should be fine. Violent. <laughs> it really is aggressive. What I do want to show you though is just how much of the noise that you're hearing is piped in. They really got this 4.4 liter refined and quiet because if I turn off. I'm not sure if it's got active exhaust or not, I, I'd have to check, but if I turn off the piped in noise, listen, this is it on, and then this is with it off. And you can hear when the electric aspects come in, you can hear this high pitched whine, listen. It's almost like a whistle. It really is a different experience. Three fifteen rear aspect ratio and I think two seventy five in the front. Tons of grip. <laughs> The power really is intoxicating. I, I quite enjoy it. I've been 
been driving it really chill throughout the day so far and it's just been in these mountain roads that have opened it up it's pretty cool <laughs> it's, the way you've got so much torque right on tap the hybrid aspect and then the V8 comes in obviously. It doesn't feel like your conventional M product, partially due to the fact we're lugging around 6,000 pounds, but I've actually had some fun with it. And that acceleration is what I think is going to really get people excited with this car. shut everything down, I think it's really, really refined. Let's go, just a tap of M1 here. Check our setup screen, what we got? Let's go comfort drivetrain, axe recovery, soft everything. Listen to that. Yeah, you do have a decent bit of road intrusion from these tires. Now, interestingly, I've read in the press release that 23s were gonna be standard, but then actually read the size of the wheel and tire that are on the car and they're 22s so i gotta check with bmw and see what that's about maybe maybe you can option a smaller wheel size the xm really does have a split personality because of this plug-in hybrid powertrain you can be so docile and calm driving through a parking lot like this and then get out onto those mountain roads and really light it up i like having the ability to do both of those in one package. So you can see plenty of power to get up and going, even in electric only mode. And when you put your foot to the floor, oh, there's an ambulance coming. When you put your foot to the floor, it stays in that mode unless you go down into the kickdown pedal. Push through the kickdown button, then the gasoline engine roars to life, even in that electric mode. It gives you all of your horsies. Now let's see, does it leave electric mode after that? Yes, then it goes into hybrid mode. You have to manually put it back into electric. Wrapping up another long day of driving, this time in the XM. I had, I had a lot of fun in it. I I don't know what to tell you. I mean, yeah, over $170,000, I'm assuming this one built out. I don't have an actual window sticker. Maybe by the time we edit this video, we'll have some sort of more detailed information. But yeah, at that price point, you should be expecting quite a lot. But I do think the XM excels in a lot of a lot of ways that you'd want and in kind of that cool dual natured aspect the fact that you can drive around a parking like this parking lot like this so smoothly and uh, efficiently and then you go out on those mountain roads and throw everything into m mode and have an absolute blast i i think it's cool to have that dual nature of the car and at the end of the day the xm is an engineering test bed for so many of the things bmw plans on doing in the future. They plan on going more and more into the electrification sphere, just like all of the other brands. And they plan on using this powertrain in a lot of products. They're using it in their race cars right now. You're gonna see it out on track. They're going to kind of learn from it and see what people like and dislike and what works well and doesn't work well and use different engines and different battery packs. And really, this is the beginning of what M and BMW uh, powertrains and the future of their lineup is going to look like. You see the kidney grills all lit up now, a little bit later in the day here, better chance to see that. Let's take a look around the back and interior a little bit more as well. These back seats really are a nice place to be. I kind of wish I had somebody to drive me around because between these pillows, this big bench seat that's all quilted, and even accents like the side being padded right here. And kind of lean up against it. <laughs> it's a ton of knee room, leg room. This is a really nice place to be back here. And uh, even though this isn't necessarily a flagship per se, there are definitely a lot of elements 
in it that sort of resemble a flagship experience. And so many other technologies that we're seeing in this car as well. Rear wheel steering, I forgot to mention that when we were out and about driving this thing hard, but that's going to help you with softer steering elements like this, as well as your high speed cornering. The plug-in hybrid aspects, the 4.4 liter V8, there's a lot going on with this car, but it's cool to see an all new model from BMW like this. And despite some of you purists not really caring for the future of a car like this, I think it's pretty cool. So Chris will be back at you soon. If you do wanna see a little bit more of our coverage from out here in Arizona, check the link in the description. Maybe he'll put the link to our BMW M2 first drive as well. Thanks to BMW for bringing us out here. Take it easy, everybody.